Uh oh. I can barely read it. Let's see if it connects to the app. There we go. Because it's a JK, usually you need to set it to lithium iron phosphate. Password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And as always, there's one setting that's off. So the charge current, it was set to 40, and we're gonna bump that up to 200. But everything else looks actually right, so that's good. Now this battery is not small for the capacity. Usually a 314 amp hour battery is about this big. But this one, it has a fuse, it has a screen, it has communication, a massive BMS, so it's quite a bit bigger than the competition. Usually this company has the best volumetric density for their capacity, but not with this model. Now that we're fully charged, we're gonna see if the overcurrent protection actually works. And it actually worked. Now we need to charge it back up. Uh-oh, I might have broke it. It's not turning back on. Oh no, I probably blew the fuse. The fuse is destroyed. Oh no, the screen just popped out. Oh, but now we can access the fuse. This thing's rated for 200 amps, but it's a 200 amp BMS. This should be 250 or higher. These massive bus bars can easily handle more. The BMS is rated for 200 amps and in the software it says 200 amps. So yeah, this is missized. Now after rummaging through my shop, I found a 300 amp fuse, but this is a very cheap one. Check out my videos where I tested these and some of them do not disconnect, so they're very dangerous. For my video, it's fantastic because now we can stress test the BMS. But if I were to recommend a fuse, use a Blue Sea Systems or something listed on my website. These cheap ones are dangerous. Also, when I was rummaging through this battery, it has two temperature sensors not attached to anything. And I've never seen this from this manufacturer. These are useless. In the packaging, there's some zip ties, but that's not what you want to use to connect these temperature sensors. You want a potted ring terminal or it needs to be glued with a conductive paste. I expect better from this company. Their other batteries are fantastic. So let's install this fuse and see what happens. Oh, and we have power. And why did this screen fall out? Did you guys not glue it in place? Also, the nuts are not the same size on the fuse. One is a 13 and one's a 14. Ooh, it's getting hot. Oh, it's still connected. Oh, whoops. That was my fault. Okay, now everything's cool to the touch. That thing got hot instantly. Actually, let's test these temperature sensors. Let's see if they actually work. And we'll test the one on the inside. Also, what are these wires sticking out right here? There are tiny little nubs of wires with exposed conductor? What is that? Oh, it's for NTC. This is the temperature sensor. That means this temperature sensor is not connected to the BMS. That means that this battery, these cells do not have low temp charging protection. This is why I never get my hopes up with these batteries. There's always a problem. Now we have some frozen water, but we need to discharge the battery because we can't do this test at 100%. Actually, let's do 240 amps and see what happens. Oh, there we go. It just disconnected. Now the BMS is rated for 200 amps, but in the programming, if you exceed that, there's an overcurrent protection delay and it was set to 300 seconds. And in that time, I pulled 20 amp hours. So I think we should shorten this time. This is good to have for surges or inductive loads, but you don't need anything more than 10 or 20 seconds. So I'm setting mine to 10 seconds and I think that will be better for this BMS. Now that we've discharged 20 amp hours, let's charge back up and give it a cold temperature and see if these temperature sensors even work. So now we're charging with 90 amps. Now it's in the ice water and the temperature is registering in the BMS. It's at negative six degrees Celsius and it's not tripping. Oh, here we go, charge under temperature protection, negative 10 degrees Celsius. This should be zero. Now I can't put it on zero, but I can put it on negative one. Now it's at zero amps, so you need to change that also. This programming is atrocious. They need to start from scratch and have a profile 
for these batteries. This is all wrong. This thing's frozen stuck. The temperature sensors are at 27 degrees Celsius and we still do not have any charging. There's an alarm that says cell count is not equal to settings. Oh, look at this. It set it to eight cells and it changed all the settings because I pressed lithium iron phosphate. Usually it works on their larger batteries, but not on this one. So I'm gonna go line by line and wake it back up once these settings are correct. So for the last 20 minutes, I went line by line and programmed it correctly. The overcurrent protection's now working. Now let's try the low temp charging protection. And it's almost at 100%, yeah, it's at 99. And it works. Now let's heat it up and it's back on. Let's try the second sensor. Oh, and it works and let's warm it up. Now we're finally gonna do a load test. It's rated for 200 amps. So we're gonna draw that as long as possible and see if we can pull full capacity. The first, we're gonna go to high voltage disconnect. Now it's fully charged and we are at 100%. So here's 200 amps continuous and we'll come back in about two hours. Now it hasn't been even an hour and it failed the test. We pulled 139 amp hours. And here is the error code, MOSFET over temperature protection. So it wasn't these temperature sensors, it was the FETs. Maybe those settings are wrong as well, so let's check them out. Now I want to change these temperature threshold settings, but if I get it wrong, it can destroy the BMS. So now that it's cooled down, we're just going to keep the test going, but it failed this test. It's rated for 200 amps and it cannot do it. So let's start the test. Failed the test again, 106 amp hours this time. So total we got 245 amp hours. Now the watt cycle 314 amp hour can do this test and pass it. And it doesn't even have a metal case. It's literally plastic. Now this company Yijing's other batteries, the larger ones can pull their full rated current. But this one can't, it's crazy. Also, I just noticed one of the leads that comes from the positive bus bar is not fused and it goes down to this charge port on the side. But it does have overcurrent protection with the BMS, but the wire seems undersized. Considering this thing can pull 240 amps for 300 seconds, and at 200 amps, we can pull 139 amp hours. So if you get a dead short on this little port over here, you're pushing 200 amps through this little wire, it's probably gonna melt. So they need a dedicated fuse for this output. That's not safe. God, there's lots of red flags with this one. I can't believe it. It's so similar to their other designs, but there's actual problems here. So unlike their other products, this one was a huge disappointment. First off, these temperature sensors were not connected. Next, they were not programmed correctly. Next, the temperature sensor connected to the cell with the potted ring terminal, which is how you're supposed to do it, is not connected to the BMS. And there's dangling wires that are cut right here. And these exposed wires are where it's supposed to connect. And you'd think, hey, maybe this got damaged in shipping. Let's see what the other end looks like. And the other end is missing wires. It doesn't even exist. Nothing was damaged here. It arrived like this. Next, the fuse is not the right size. It's rated for 200 amps, but the BMS is also rated for 200 amps. But the BMS has an overcurrent protection delay of 300 seconds. So that means we can overload this a lot and it won't do anything. And the fuse will actually catch it first. And that's how I blew mine. That should be 250 or 300 amps. And this BMS, instead of 300 seconds, it should be set to 10 or 20 seconds. Next, this 12 volt outlet on the side has this unfused wire going to the main positive bus bar and the BMS on the other side. And remember, this thing's programmed with 300 second delay. So if you have unlimited current going through this little wire for 300 seconds, guess what's going to happen? And this one bypasses the fuse entirely. Now this other cable has the same issue, but it's large enough that it might trip this BMS if it's programmed correctly. And again, how I got it, it was not programmed correctly. And when I set it to lithium iron phosphate with JKBMS with the larger batteries, usually it works perfectly. When I did it with this one, it set it to an eight cell configuration and it changed all the settings and it messed everything up. 
Next, I tried a 200 amp continuous draw on the BMS because that's what it's rated for after I put in a 300 amp fuse and it failed the test twice. Next, this bus bar, I had to push it under this piece of metal and that's not very nice. It can do it because it's flexible, but yeah, they need to design this differently. Next, the screen is not being held on at all. It popped out when I was trying to replace the fuse. Also, it's pretty large. In this size category, there's lots of competition, and the watt cycle is about this tall, right? And it can actually pull 200 amps nonstop. It actually has a good BMS with the new dumb version. So yeah, pretty disappointed in this model. And these are some real safety concerns. I don't know why they added this. When are you gonna use a cigarette lighter adapter on the side of a battery? You wanna stack these batteries sideways, you wanna put them on top of each other. Why would you need this? And most of my frustration with this system was the BMS programming. There should be default settings for this cell configuration. It should not default to eight cells in series and all the other wrong settings. And it really confuses me because how they design the other ones, it works perfectly with the overcurrent protection, with the fuse, with the breaker, everything. They don't have this silly thing on there, it has like six temperature sensors and they're all connected. Why did they make this one so bad? And it's not even competitive. The price was like 600. You can get a watt cycle for almost $200 less and it performs better in every single way. So yeah, not a fan, I do not like this. I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one, bye.